Lit Media Show. I'm Anita, and today we'll be diving into the profound topic of love and sacrifice. And with me is Thomas Gift Musa. Thank you very much for joining us. He is the founder of Relationship Heartbeat. But today um, it's Valentine, and people talk about love. You see, if you go out, you see people saying, "I love you, I love you, I love you." So, can you tell us what is love and what is sacrifice? Okay. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on your show. Um, it's a profound topic. It's a very um, interesting one. What is love? Mm -hmm. you know, we are in a season of love now, and a lot of things are going to be happening on the 14th and, and all what have you. Uh, when we talk about what is love, today we have a lot of definitions, a lot of misconceptions, um, and that's one of the challenges we have when it comes to the, um, on the, the um, business of family, relationship, and marriage. Mm -hmm. Wrong business of love what is love and what is not love. It's important we get the right definition. What is love? Now, uh, for me, I like to see love as a, a, a complete um, block that has different parts. You know, a lot of times people just major on one aspect of love and then they, they call that is love. For example, you see a young man, sees a young lady, <laughs> she's beautiful, you know, figure eight, and she's just walking and suddenly he starts feeling, you know, this emotion, uh, emotion this attraction, mm -hmm. and somehow, somehow, he thinks he's in love. Yes, I was saying, from the very first time I just saw you, I just fell in love. I just love you and everything. So we have that wrong job of love that is making a mess of a lot of lives. So for me, like I said earlier, it's a, a block uh, or a, a, a building that has different parts and everything has to be there for us to call it love. So for me, I see love as, first of all, a spirit or a person. That was the book of um, 1 John 4, 16. It says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So the Bible makes us understand that God himself is love. Okay. This means that God, love is a person, is a personality. So when we talk about what is love, the first thing for me is that love is a person, love is a spirit. So for me to say there is love, I feel love for a person, or a person feels love for me, I have to see God. There has, there has to be God in the context. When God is removed from the equation, it is not love. It may look like love, but it is not love in God in the context. Because what you will need to be able to do love the way God wants it to be done can only be found in God. So the first thing I see love as as God. Second thing I see love as I see love as a a commitment. What is love? Love is a commitment. When you tell somebody I love you, it's a commitment. You cannot tell someone you love the person and then suddenly you find out something about the person uh, and the person has certain kind of defects or whatever. And the first thing you want to do is abandon she. Yeah, that shows that yes, yeah, abandon the person and you say I love you. When you say I love you, it means I commit to you. I'm going to be. That's why you see when it comes to the marriage vows, uh, I, I, I um, do some persons feel it's against scripture to say in good and bad that because as Christians we believe everything will be good at all times. So it's not good for you to say I will be with you in good and bad times, in poverty and in poor field. But the the whole concept is that if I love you, if I say I love you, I should be committed to you. Okay, so speaking of commitment, let's say um, I meet you, let's say I meet you randomly and yes. maybe we start talking and I develop this feeling for you, the one that is popular now. Yeah. And okay, we now started having, we started a relationship, then I now find out that, okay, maybe you have uh, some part of disease, let's say uh, you yeah, are HIV positive and all that stuff. And with the, what you have, there's no way I'll be able to commit. But I still love you. So are you going to say that because I don't commit, I'm not, um, I don't love you? Uh, that, that is why I said uh, I started love mm, by talking of God. Okay. Um, because when it comes to the idea of going to a relationship, mm -hmm. the first thing you should have is a conviction. Conviction. So when you are going into a relationship, you should have conviction. Mm -hmm. This is the person I want to marry. Mm -hmm. So when you talk of issues like HIV, you talk of issues like um, AS, genotype and all that. No, we as the marriage councils, for example, or the church committee on marriage mm -hmm. will tell you it does not work. You are you are AS or AS, you cannot get married. But we've had cases of people who, who like a couple came for counseling and they told the young man, um, you are AS, you are AS, you can't get married. And the young man said, I know what I hate. God told me this is my wife. I'm still going to marry her. So the committee committee said, okay, that's fine. What are you going to do? You write. Mm -hmm. write that. You were told, you advised against this, but you agreed to go. So if anything happens tomorrow, 
you have the evidence that you are the one that went there. Just the way when you go to hospital and you want to probably discharge yourself, you have to sign. So they went there and got my had three children. First one AS, second one AS, third one AA. Are you with me? A couple went to go into marriage, and the young lady had been into prostitution for many years. So she had done a lot of abortion. We got to a point between that look, at this point in time, we're going to have to go to the womb or else you die. So she agreed to remove the womb. So after a while, she gave her life to Christ. She just wanted to serve God. You know, she wasn't interested in the marriage. Let me just, I know I've messed up my past. Like, um, I've wasted so much time. And so she knew she had wasted time in her life. But let me just serve God. Just give my life to God and die in four days and fine. So suddenly along the line, a young man came and said, I want to marry you. God said, he said, who's God? Go and pray again. Because she knew what she had. But the young man kept saying, God said, so she called the young man, called her pastor and said, look, I don't have a name. So what is the woman saying? I don't have a woman. And the young man said, I heard God. This is my wife. I'm still going to marry her. And the man said, this is testifying they were the female child education. No woman. So it's it's you know a lot of times when people just do things out of you know self will and all that, you come into issues, you run into issues. So most times for us, we try to save you from those issues because we are not we are not sure you have the conviction. But ideally, there should be a conviction first. When there's a conviction, these things do not come. It's when there is no conviction, you are the one who has led yourself that you you now are forced to withdraw back. And even when it comes to withdrawing, there are things that should not be an issue. Yeah. There are things that we can say this is an issue. For example, when there is no woman, that is an issue. The gender that is an issue. Mm-hmm. But when you're saying um you're from Yoruba, mm-hmm. from Hausa, that's not an issue. Okay. Are you getting me? In my village, we don't that's not an issue. I, I don't so there are issues that we can say, okay, this is actually something that we can say no. Mm-hmm. But there are issues that should not and then some persons are even for very minor issues are willing to withdraw. So you can see that there was never any commitment in no the first place. Conviction. Yeah, no conviction. Okay. So um um like I was saying earlier, the love is first the of first God, yeah. second commitment, the love is as well the feeling. Okay. The feeling is also involved in love. We're not going to move out, we're not going to be all spiritual and, and just speaking tongues. Yes, the emotions is involved as well. So love is a spirit, love is commitment, love is a feeling. And lastly, love is a fruit. Okay. Just five, I would say that the fruit of the spirit is love. Okay. And then that fruit has fruits. Mm-hmm. So that the thing says that love is patient, love is kind, love is gentle, does not seek his own. So love is a fruit mm-hmm. of the spirit that has its fruits. Mm-hmm. What are the fruits? Yeah. Patience, mm-hmm. kindness, gentleness, meekness. Mm-hmm. Those are the fruits of love. Wow. So for you, for you to tell me this is love. I want to see God. I want to see commitment. You see young men today, they see a lady and they are on campus, they've not seen the lady's parents. They've not seen the lady's pastor. They've not nothing has been done in the line of commitment. Are they sleeping with the lady, living together, and commitment is left out. When a young man tells you I love you and is not willing to commit mm-hmm. by that, that that's not love. Mm-hmm. When someone loves you, they want to know the authorities in your life, they want to get to meet this person. It's a kind of commitment. I want to know your family. I want to know your mother. I want to call. I want to see your family. You want to to let them know me. I want that commitment. So that has to be there for you to be loved. They will have to see the fruit of the spirit. Our love is dead the person. And how do we see it? By the characters. By the fruit we shall know The person time is gentle. And then lastly, there is a feeling. You want to see that this person feels good towards you. The person likes being around you. The person is proud of you. Not the person, the person that, that is not proud of you. For example, you see a lady telling the fiance, fiance um, uh, my friends are coming around. Please, I don't, I don't, I don't want them to see you. Wow. Where is the love? Maybe uh, she's not, she's she's not, not proud. proud of the young man she sees in love. So, um, I, as time goes on, we're talking about tests of love. One of the tests of love is acceptance. The person loves you, they accept you. No matter how you do, what you do, the proof that they love you is that they have accepted you. People will say, What did you see in this person? Let like me see. Uh, love is blind. Is blind and beauty is out of the other. So the person knows what they see in you. So someone that cannot, that is not. Um, have a feeling towards you that person does not have. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. you, you talk about commitment, so that brings us to sacrifice. Okay. What is this a sacrifice? What is sacrifice? Okay. Um, looking at the meaning of sacrifice, sacrifice means to let go. It means to let go of something, to give away at a cost, at a great cost, often. 
Sacrifice has to do with you letting go of something that you value, mm -hmm. something that means so much to you, mm -hmm. and that will cost you, but for a greater gain or for the goodwill of another. Mm -hmm. So that has to do with sacrifice. And, and then when we talk about sacrifice, it has to be it's one of the proofs of love. Sacrifice is one of the proofs of love. When there is love, there will be sacrifice. Okay, so basically there's a connection between love and sacrifice. Okay, so it's, uh, it's very common for someone to say, I love you. If you go out, you see someone can just type, ah, I love you, I love you. How, in this generation where everyone uses the word, I love you, how do you identify love? Okay, like I said earlier, I said love is a spirit, love is commitment, I said love is a feeling, there's a feeling, and I said that love is a fruit. Um, beyond that, we have different um, tests or ways you identify love. Uh, we can identify love by looking at the passion. There is when it is love. How do I how do I know someone loves me? Mm -hmm. You will see a passion for the person. You know the way you see somebody who loves a particular sport. Mm -hmm. Have you seen some men who love football? Yeah, they can do anything. And then they are watching football, and the wife passes the screen mm -hmm. and stands there. Are you getting me? Yeah. You know, for example, when the half is going on now, you know what's going to happen. So men have shut down the house. No telemundo, nothing is. Are you getting me? That shows the passion. Just when you have a money fan and you can see the passion for so when we talk about how many find you see a passion. There is this desire, passion means desire. The person desires you. You see the calling, you see the texting, the person wants to check up on you, the person wants to know how you're doing. Uh, have you eaten? The most common question, have you eaten? What did you eat today? Are you there? All that. So you, you see the passion from the person and the proof of passion is pursuit. Just the way if you have passion for God, you pursue God. So also, if a person has passion for you, they will pursue you. They always want to know how you're doing and all that. Then there's a thin line between this passion and pursuit and obsession. We're not going there to be. Another proof of love, for how you know love, is sacrifice. Okay. Sacrifice is another proof of love. The Bible says that no, um, greater love no man than this, that the man gave his life for a friend. So what the Bible says is that the height of love is sacrifice. Greater love had no man than this. There is no greater proof of love. There, after this, there is no other love. That a man is willing to give himself, to sacrifice himself. So the height of love is sacrifice. That a person is willing to let go, is willing to, to, to lose something that costs them just because they love. So um, in sacrificing, you find a uh, letting go of your ego, your pride. Okay. We have an uh, uh, individual um, pride, ego, I can't tell you this, I don't, you know, I'm a graduate, I'm a pharmacist, I'm a lawyer, and all that, but when it comes to love, you let go of all that. You know, it's the same thing that God had to leave heaven, come down to earth, and start cutting man. That's the whole of love. That was it, what is man? I don't have mindful of him. You know what it caused God to give his son? For God's love, the one that he gave his own, it, it was not the giving, it was the giving of the only because so that was the sacrifice. So it is in that sacrifice that you find love. You let go of your ego, you sacrifice your time. You 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 know, tell you have to do other things, but because your partner wants your uh, attention, you say you love the person, you will sacrifice time. You will sacrifice even your opinions. There are sometimes you or your your own um desire. You sacrifice this is what I want. But it's fine. Since this is what you want, let's let go. That's compromise. I'm willing to let go. So you sacrifice your time, you sacrifice your money, sacrifice your, your emotions, your pride, your, your a lot of things you will let go of just to show that there is love. So in love, I said earlier, in love, you will find passion, you will find sacrifice. It's very important. And then you will find the pleasure in love. What do I mean? You see that this person finds pleasure in your presence. You, you just find this person is around you and he seems happy. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember a lady I was counseling a while, a young man, he was telling me that there was a lady that was suddenly getting attached to him. That he decided to withdraw from the lady after a while because she didn't really have anything in mind for the other time. And then she was getting attached. She was trying to define relationship, relationship. Define, yeah, so he was withdrawing and the lady felt sick. Felt sick and he went to see her and she recovered. Wow. So you find that the person finds pleasure mm. in so much so that even their chemical makeup aligns to your presence. 
their biological everything allies people when you are around them, they are happy. When you are going, you see them, they miss you. And when you find that, then in the test of love, one of the tests of love, like I was saying, is acceptance. Accept, and a person who loves you accepts you, they accept your past. Everybody has a past. Mm-hmm. Somebody was once an amoba, a cultist, a prostitute, once into some vices. Are you getting me? Yes. But when it comes to love, mm-hmm. if I love you, I accept your past. Mm-hmm. When you see a joy by relationship or in something that wants to be relationship, mm-hmm. and then issues are always coming up that have to do with your past. This person is always going up. It's always mentioning it. He seems angry. He shows that he has not accepted your past. He tells you he loves you, but that thing you told him. Mm-hmm. Is something you can't come to terms with. So every time you say you had the argument, say see you. That's how you were you enter position or something that you have not changed. It's in your body. And you're wondering. But when they accept it, they accept you for who you are. They accept your past, they accept your present. So where, wherever you are now financially, wherever you are spiritually, even though they want the best for you, they want you to improve, but they accept where you are now. So if for example a young man is is let me say teaching, that's the job he's doing. And the lady says, I love you. She has to be proud of him and the job he's doing. She will not lie to her friends and say, my fiance is a doctor. Just to cover up. It means she does not accept the job he does. She feels it's beneath her. So she has to find a way to cover up. See a lot of things happening. The young one is coming to see lady's parents and the lady tells him, when you're coming, go and hire a car. Go and hire a car. Then my parents think you have a car. I don't have a car. Why can't you accept me that way? You want to package me into somebody I am not, which means you have not accepted who I am. So there is acceptance of the past, the present, and the future. They I'm going to. A person who does not accept where you are going to. Uh, this this pastor thing you are doing, you say God has called you. We are not there. And you are not married. And the person tell you, me, I'm not there. It means that when you when that call finally materializes, there will be trouble. Because she's already telling you, I'm not among you, it's you that God called you, and you, you are still going. It means she has not accepted that aspect of where you are going. You tell the young man, I want to be, I want this, these are my dreams, these are my visions. And he's, he's somehow, somehow fighting and saying, just know that person will not love you. What if, what if the person is not built to support something like that? For example, it's not people that want to, like a guy, and I say, okay, the Lord is calling me into ministry. Okay. I really like this guy, but I don't like the pastor's wife job. Okay. You have to smile where you're not supposed to. You have to do that. Is a lot of pressure on pastor's mm-hmm. wife. So I love this guy, but what he's doing or where he's going, I'm not built to support that kind of person. Mm-hmm. Will you say I don't love the guy if I end the relationship? Okay. You see, the, the, problem that's, the problem is now, when you were speaking, you said, I. There were so many eyes in your yeah. statement. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not built. I, you didn't bring God into the world. What does God want me to do? Mm-hmm. Is this what God wants for me? You know, there should be a place where you meet certain things that you know personally. For instance, many pastors will tell you that they were they didn't like the call when it came. They didn't want to go into pastor pastor work. They didn't like it. Are you getting me? But they had to surrender their call. Are you with me? Um, when Jonah was called, this was not thing. Jonah was going inside because he didn't want to. Go. Are you getting me? So, but somewhere along the line, we have to be able to say, what is God saying? I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor's wife. I don't like this aspect. But is there a conviction? Let's start there. Is there a conviction? Is this what God wants? Because when where there is where there is the will of God, there will be grace. And when there is grace, there will be a link in it. Even when natural is not something you love or want to do, when you accept the will of God, that grace to do it will come. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of a uh, sacrifice, okay. there are some times where a guy will sacrifice for a lady. For example, sending him to school. The guy is not going to school, he's working and sending a lady to school. Then after everything, the lady will not be like, it's not up to my level, I can't, it's not going to work. So can you identify situations where sacrifice in relationship might be considered unethical or unacceptable? According to it can be religious standard or maybe society. Okay. Um sacrifice was like I said, sacrifice is a proof of love. Mm-hmm. You love a person, you sacrifice for the person. Mm-hmm. And sacrifice is very important when it comes to relationship and marriage mm-hmm. because you're bringing two persons mm-hmm. with different opinions, different personalities, mm-hmm. different ideologies into a ship or relationship mm-hmm. or marriage. Mm-hmm. And these persons are going to come with their own individual opinions, perspective, tastes. Mm-hmm. Some persons like to sleep 
in the second position. Some persons like to sleep with the lights off, some with the light on, some persons like to sleep with the fan on, with the fan off, you know, some persons don't mind how the house is scattered, some persons are neat to a fault. So if two persons who have of course, different opinions, backgrounds at all, mm. will come into one setting and survive. There will be need for compromise and sacrifice. Mm. Sacrifice helps you to build something that will last. Mm. Because if we are going to, um, I'm going to have my way, mm. and you're going to have your way, it won't work. Okay. So sacrifice is important that we are able to come together mm. and I let go of some of my expectations, you let go of some of yours, or perspectives, um, opinions, preferences, and then we meet at a middle point. Now, um, why sacrifice is important? Mm. So, there are some sacrifices that are not necessary. Not all sacrifices are necessary or um, important. Um, there is need for balance. Because as you begin to sacrifice, there are things that you should not sacrifice. For instance, you should not, now I'm talking from spiritual um, um, standpoint now first of all you should not sacrifice your virtue your morality because of relationship or say okay um talking about sacrifice so let me let go of this um when it comes to relationship or my relationship let's talk about relationship now and you you do not let go or sacrifice your virtue there are things we call persuasions, convictions of how you know you are supposed to live your life according to the expression of God for you. Those um, convictions should not be let go for us. When you, you say, I'm going to keep my body to marriage. And a young man comes and says, I love you. You say, I love you too. And then he wants you to sacrifice. That's your virtue. That's your opinion or your conviction that comes from your belief in God or your faith. So you should sacrifice your faith, your virtue on the platform of love. When you do that, remember, God is the first, if there will be love, will be God. So when you have to do something that takes you out of God, you're already out of love. It's no longer love. So you should not sacrifice your virtue, your faith, your integrity. In Acts 4, we see a couple, uh, and there's a Safira, go to meet Apostle Paul and say, we sold the land for so and so amount. And you find that they were actually united. They were one, like husband and wife should be, but they were never in line. And we see the results. So even in marriage, you should not sacrifice your integrity. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit will not say, okay, they are married. Yeah, this is husband and wife, and they are being united in this thing. Let's spare them. Give the man his own. Give the woman her own. Are you getting me? So you should not sacrifice your virtue, your faith, your belief in God. So you come to the relationship. You know, at times people come to the relationship and they call their persuasions. This is the kind of person I am. And somewhere along the line, after a month or two months, they can't identify the person they become. The lady suddenly loses her prayer life. Suddenly she is introduced to all sorts of smoking, pornography, sending notes because you choose to sacrifice. So that should not come up. And then of course, when it comes to the idea of young men training, um, sacrifice should not be made without communication. And when you're making sacrifice, sacrifice when it comes to relationship, we advise, relationship, when you're sacrificing in a relationship, that sacrifice should be based purely on agape love. A love that gives without expecting. So when you're sacrificing in a relationship for a lady because you want marriage, we do not see that sacrifice as coming from love because it is transactional. There is something you want in return, which is marriage. It seems good on the outside because look, you're paying her school and everything. But at the long run, you are not doing it because you love her, because you want to help her. If marriage is not on the table, you will not help her. No. So that kind of sacrifice is not even being done in love. It is a transaction. I'm going to send you to school. When you finish, you marry me. It's business. That's not love. So a sacrifice that you do in a relationship should come from love. You are giving with that expectation. So that I want to send you to school. If you come out, you marry me fine. You see, I will see this is made by a, a dating couple or a, a couple who are caught it because the person don't like the word dating. He is, is a word, which is basically because of the way the world has done dating. So Christians frown on the word of the use of dating, fair courtship. So let's use courtship. And you see a couple who are caught it, and then something happens and they break up. And the young man comes and says, The gel I bought you, bring the gel. They will vote, they will that wig on your head. But give me that wig. You, you've seen videos on social media. The young man just takes the girl wig from her head in the 
fast food restaurant. The phone she's using, I bought it for you. Give me this phone. Even shoe, pull the shoe. He wants to naked the lady. Why? Because he never got all those things out of love. Because I'm not the business has failed. So let me retrieve my investments. <laughs> but if it was done out of love, he's willing to let go, even though he's hot, he's pained, but he's willing to let go. That is love. So we do, we frown or we dis, um, discourage sacrificing that has to do with you wanting something in the top. It's not it's not correct. Mm-hmm. So sacrifice should you should sacrifice your, your virtue, your faith, your belief, mm-hmm. your integrity, your safety, your welfare. A sacrifice should not be done that is not out of love. And then, of course, sacrifice should be communicated. But even at times, even when you communicate and tell the person, I'm sending you to school because I want this, and the person accepts, something can break down. So, we advise it's better if you're doing it, even though you're going to communicate, let it be out of love. So, that police will not settle because when, when you were doing love, police do not know you. Now you are broken up, police is coming to settle because the young man wants to retrieve his gems by all means. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, um, currently there's this uh, pressure on young people, for example, okay, um, uh, um, in my finance, okay. almost all my funding, they're using iPhone and all that stuff. Okay, okay so I don't mean I'm dating someone and I want the person to get me this latest uh, iPhone, okay. like, you know, the pressure and all that stuff. So okay. there's a difference between a uh, sacrifice that's made out of genuine love. Mm-hmm. And sacrifice that is made out of pressure or obligation. Okay. How do you identify the friendship between these two okay. sacrifices? Mm-hmm. When it comes to relationship, mm-hmm. the dynamics are different than when it comes to marriage. Mm-hmm. Because in relationship, there is actually no obligation. But what do I mean? The Bible says the husbands, mm-hmm. are you going to love your wives, and your wives are supposed to be your husband. Using the word husband and wives, mm-hmm. and so the setting of husband and wife is different. A man is mandated to do something because this is your wife, mm-hmm. but it's different when it comes to relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, for example, I tell ladies, mm-hmm. I say relationship is not an occupation. So, a young man who is cutting you is not under obligation to buy you a phone, he's not under obligation to put your salary every month. So, so it's, it's from his free will. Because you are not even bearing his name yet. You are still bearing your father's name. So your father is still the one taking care of you, not the young man. I'm not forgetting me. It's like when a person is not a child of God. What did Jesus Christ tell the woman who came for you in Father? Mm-hmm. He said, It is not me to give the food made for children to, to dogs. So this, like I saw a post online sometimes talking about girlfriend duties. What is girlfriend duties? Your girlfriend does not have duties. Come to wash, come to sweep, no. That is talking about wife duties. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is that for the lady to understand that it is not an occupation. The young man is not under any obligation. Whatever he does for you at that point in time is from his free will. Because you are not yet a couple, you're not yet married. So you are still separate, you're not under the same name and all things. Um, so whatever he does for you should be voluntary from his will and you should accept it. So that is just Check that balance, and therefore, young men to do not be under any pressure. Not only should put you under pressure and say, Get me iPhone, get me your mind, you're my fiance, your boyfriend, whatever. No, because that is not your duty yet. But if you are led and apply for love, if really you will love her, that is within your means, you will be yeah, within your means and, your, and you can afford it without breaking the bank. You should go ahead. So, how do I uh, identify some someone that is out of genuine love? And one out of obligation. Um, uh, when it comes to genuine love, the person does it without much grudge. Person does it without much grudge, and when they do it, it does not become an issue. Yes, but when someone does it because you forced their hand, even after five months, they are still reminding you that phone I bought you. This phone I didn't want to buy. He has not yet released. The, 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 no, the sacrifice you give, even after five months, you are just like still paying you. <laughs> you have not really let go. So, more often than not, when it's from genuine love um, and all that, you see it, there's the ease of letting go. There is the ease of, um, there is not done out of God. But when it comes from a pressure, you push the person, the person does it, um, you find that there is there even the resentment. That may come up when you put the person under pressure. You know, if you don't get me the phone this Valentine, I will, I, I will. It's over, it's over. And the young man has to go and test and all that. 
And, and most often than not, when you do such things, you put the person under pressure to go and get something from you. They, they come and demand something in return. They come and demand, okay, I'm getting you this, what am I getting? What am I? Because you are putting the pressure on them. But when it comes from your heart, they want to give. It is normally a free will gift. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, uh, on the 14th is Valentine's. Okay. Everybody is excited. You are not very ready. I'm just very, like you. <laughs> Okay, uh, speaking of love, the Bible said uh, there's time for everything, time to love, time to hate. When is the right time to love? When how do you know this is the right time to love? Okay, uh, the right time to love is when you are ready to love. Hmm. When you are ready to love. Remember what I said? I said love has to be committed. Okay. So, are you ready to commit now? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to commit? Uh, I said love is God. Mm -hmm. Is God there? So when when is that when you are ready? We're talking about maturity. It's not only about age, but there should be maturity. There should be financial maturity. It means what is financial maturity? Uh, it means that there is the capacity to make money. This means the person that has a skill mm -hmm. can bake, can can um, sew, can do has a skill or has a certificate, something that they have already gone through school and they have that they can present get a paying job and then the money gets something so that is the ability to make money second thing about financial maturity is the ability to spend money right okay. so business know how to make money but they don't know how to spend money and then they you find a lot of issues are coming up so business get money and they have this impossible you know, buying all you know, those yes they buy this you see they buy something they don't really use it for three four months they end up selling it so there is the ability to uh, spend money rightly ability to save is also involved in financial maturity. The person who doesn't know how to save, who eats, Bible says, God gives the bread to the eater and seed to the sower. So the person should know how to sow, how to save. And then you also have ability to invest because it is what you invest that brings back profits. Savings doesn't bring back profits. If I save is when you save, the money is depreciating. Yeah, exactly. If you save 10,000 by two months' time, what you have is more 10,000 again. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? So, there is your ability to invest. So, that is what I'm That should be good. They will have emotional maturity. The person should have a hold or a grip over their emotions. So, if, if, when it's the right time to love, is at a time when I can control my emotions. When I feel jealous and I still can hold it. When a person who has anger issues, that's not the right time to love. That's the right time to go for, for therapy, <laughs> not magic. Okay, you need to go therapy. Therapy may not necessarily be you going to see, and you can see your pastor, you can see a mentor, you can, you can even, even your prayer can be therapy. Lord, I have this anger issue. Help me spend time with Holy Spirit and all that. So, right time to love is when you have financial maturity, emotional maturity, mm -hmm. ability to interpret emotions. They will also have or spiritual maturity is also needed of course physical maturity is not um, it's not it's not for children so the person who is 16 17 doesn't have business being in issue still like to love still like to read your books mm -hmm. so I tell the Lord so you're ready and you are ready when you're matured financially spiritually emotionally physical that's when is the right time Love. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Um. Let's say I'm in a relationship with someone. Okay. Okay. Um. We are both students. And yes. Okay. Um. I was giving money for my school fees, and maybe the person's house rent has expired, and therefore the landlord is put mounting pressure on the guy. Okay. So, uh, if I if I sacrifice my my school fees, okay, let's say sacrifice for let's say one month. Hopefully it's going to pay me back. Okay, just use it and settle your hand rent for the main time. How do you navigate the fine line between making sacrifice for someone you love and compromising your own well being? Okay. Because if I don't pay that school fees and the time is you know okay, the time uh, yes, yes. How do you it's navigate the fine line between the two? You won't have issues, mm -hmm. serious issues with by um persons made sacrifice for the person they love mm -hmm. and so I, 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 we've heard of such issues the lady the young man is bringing them giving the lady mm -hmm. take this one thousand take this ten thousand this i'm saving with you and the lady is taking the money to give to her own just wow okay. so he's saying this morning that this young man is giving me mm -hmm. take it for our, our wedding 
Oh, you need to be the house. Yeah, I used to be the house and all that and all that. So sometimes even the sacrifice you are making, you are not the fires. In fact, it was just foolishness or something like that. So I, when it comes to sacrificing, um, there are things that you, you should, for instance, um, you know, at times we seem to put ourselves, we box ourselves to the corner. And I said for us as believers, we have that advantage of having God. So I will start with you having a leading. Having a leading. I want to give this money. And of course, first of all, before you go to the ship, I advise you. I advise. It should be somebody you trust. Somebody you trust. Somebody you trust. Are you getting me? So if you trust a person and then you are willing to say, okay, I want to let go myself. I've had issues when that happened. And it, it turned out to be a very wise decision. Giving your money at um, school fees and then along, along, along the line, it pays back and then everything balances. Mm-hmm. And I've had issues where that happens and it does not balance at all. So I think for me, it's do you trust this person? Mm-hmm. Is this person trustworthy? Mm-hmm. Do you have other means of getting the money if that that does not work out? Are there other means of you getting the money? Mm-hmm. And, and are you led? Are you prayed about it? Are you led to do it? Mm-hmm. Are you getting me? At times you feel that this is the only way. Yeah, that is not the only way. So when it comes to school fees, I, I personally, removing leading, I would advise for a lady to let go as a school fees for a young man. And then even the young man who is who is um, who loves you would not want you to make that sacrifice. Oh, if that's young man. Yes. If that, you, know, you see, as I'm saying, a lot of times we bust ourselves to the corner. We feel like this is the only option. And most often when you find that such things happen, you, you find people making a lot of mistakes. There is never this is the only option, mm-hmm. especially for a believer, for a Christian. Have you ever had someone call you before and tell you, you are my last hope? No, 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 You know, you are my last hope. <laughs> and that person who sent you a test sent it to 10 people. Mm-hmm. So you are my last hope. 10 of you are at the last hope. Mm-hmm. You now go and bring out all your money. Then 10 of you will contribute. I'm and send it to the person. You, the person puts you under a pressure. Puts you under emotional blackmail, and you're my last hope. If you leave me, I'm finished. The person will not die. The person will not die. Are you hearing me? So when we say this is for, for me, I don't normally say this is the only option. Yes, after this one, nothing else happens. You you don't you are limiting God. So for me, I would not. You know, when someone loves you, when they love you, they do not want to put you through certain risks. There are certain requests that they will not make of you. Yeah. It will be you who will yeah. offer it. Yeah. And when you offer it, they will even tell you no, no, no. Because they know that there is the likelihood that that money will not come out. Money, money is a whole different issue. It's a big matter. You lend someone money, even when you have genuine intentions to pay back, anything can happen. So the person lends you 5,000 from maybe for example, the lady is working in a company and they give her money to work. Mm-hmm. And that money, if she does not provide it, she'll be fired and be arrested and she brings the money to work. And you have genuine intentions to pay back before the deadline. Mm-hmm. Anything can happen. Mm-hmm. And you don't pay up and she loses the job, not is going bad and all that. Are you getting me? So most times you would not put your partner in certain tight corners that may b- 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 fire on them and affect their well-being spiritually, emotionally. So I w- I w- in that case, I would not advise the baby. Okay, so uh, speaking of trust, um, finance is a very important uh, aspect of relationship. And I had this experience that someone texted me and was like, Anita, please can you help me with social amount? I'm in a very tight school now. I'm going to be paying you at the end of the month. Okay. So I literally didn't have that amount at that particular time. I had to ask my colleague. Then they send it to my account, I transferred it. After the, the stipulated time, I sent the text message. Then I asked what now. Time don't reach you. Nobody know, like send me the money back. It was not like, calm down, I will send you the money. After one month, two months, when I sent him a voice note, it was not like, you are shouting at me because of 
he now puts the amount. Mm. And I actually gave this money because I trust that it's going to pay back. Yes. Uh-huh. So if you're having a partner that has this, uh, that is not mature when it comes to financial spending and all that, so how do you tackle this kind of issue when you know you're already committed in the relationship and not have to do with acceptance? You've mm. already accepted the person and you're committed okay. to the relationship. How do you tackle those issues? Okay. Um, when it comes to issues like this, uh, I, I need to start, we start from the beginning. Okay. Let's diagnose the very root cause. Let's call. Let's start from the beginning, mm-hmm. so we don't tackle it from the middle point. Mm-hmm. Um, they say you do not continue making a mistake mm-hmm. because you've made it for so long. Okay. Now you find that a young man has financial immaturity. Mm-hmm. He's not spending well, he's not saving well, he's not investing well, and you find yourself at that point. Mm-hmm. We need to know how did that you start that movement. Was there a leading? Mm-hmm. Was there a conviction? Because I know you're familiar with the concept of red flags. Yeah. So when you see a red flag, mm-hmm. and as long as you're not married, mm-hmm. you, you should be you should be willing to accept this is a red flag. Mm-hmm. So when we say love means commitment, mm-hmm. it does not mean commitment to your debts. It does not mean commitment to foolishness. Okay. Uh, so even in commitment, mm-hmm. there are times when you say, no, I can't do this. So that's why you have the concept of red flags. Mm-hmm. So when you have a partner who is financially reckless, mm-hmm. that can ruin a marriage. Yeah. That can bring pain. Mm-hmm. That can bring sadness. Mm-hmm. So you you have issues of ladies who are married mm-hmm. and the husband can just earn the salary and he goes to gamble with it and he comes back by 31st first second there's no money he has spent the money or you find a young man who just his salary and he's sending 10k to auntie 10k to auntie, the whole village sending them. we have men who have that we call it god complex they feel they should help everybody and then there's no food in the house mm. but he's doing sadaka Mm-hmm. He's even using children's school fees. So when you find financial recklessness, mm-hmm. I would advise that you sit down and diagnose it. And then, is it something you've addressed, mm-hmm. brought to his knowledge, brought to his notice that look, this is wrong? Mm-hmm. And when you did that, if you've not done that, you should do that. Mm-hmm. And if you've done that, what was his response? Look, he did not have to spend money. Mm-hmm. Uh, Obina, you are spending money in the way that. I do not find I'm not comfortable with. How you just have you just last week you told me you got 100 k from the business deal, and now the 100 k is gone. What did you do with it? And and you came you seen new sneakers and he only has sneakers. He's buying new sneakers. Mm. The same sneaker he has in red, he bought blue, bought green, and you're wondering this is well, yes. And then you're, you're you're complaining and he's telling you leave me. He's not my money. yes. He's not appreciating or he's not, he's not listening to you. He's not hearing what you are saying. He feels it's my money, it does not affect you. But look, what affects him very soon will affect you. When you get married to him and you are too, and all the money he's spending, there will be issues on the marriage. So I, I think you should diagnose it. Have I spoken to him? If I have, what was his response? Was he willing to change? Is he making effort to change? If he's not making effort to change, he's even getting worse. You've been with him one month, two months, three months, or you've been with her for a period of time you've, you've spoken out you've waited for to see if they will listen and make effort to change because even that is what sacrifice means i'm willing to work on myself even though this is what this is what i've been used to this is what i know to do but when my partner comes and says this will not work i'm willing to change willing to put in effort that's sacrifice as well even put in sacrifice your comfort this is what I like doing. Me, when I have money, I just go to Maca, uh, Peroni, I just sit down, I just have a good time. And, and I can't come and kill myself. I need to enjoy life. And then you blow 50k at the, at the city, and then you come back home and you get me. So uh, and, all that. and you are willing to change that lifestyle. That's mm-hmm. sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So when the person is not willing to do this, it means the person will not be willing to sacrifice, mm-hmm. to change, to make effort for you. Mm-hmm. I advise you to do that. But if the person is making efforts, trying to change the daily, you no, know, because that was an iron sharpening iron. Mm-hmm. So your job in his life is to make him better. Mm-hmm. But when you come and you find that he's not willing to be made better, it means you're not his help mm-hmm. Because your help meet comes to help you be better. Mm-hmm. So when you come into a man's life or a woman's life and you find that your help is not working with, 
you know, the the Bible calls the man, or we call the man, the uh, bridegroom, means you are the one who groom the bride. Okay. It's not even bride, man and groom. A woman is called the helper, help me. Mm-hmm. It's not even man, a woman can help. As a man, you can't help. Mm-hmm. So that one just say, I know this one is no magician, I'm not saying mm-hmm. here. You are not sent to every man. You are not sent to every woman, just one person. So we find the man is not going to change, not going to change the lifestyle. And best don't say I'm committed, I have to know. Except this marriage. Because mm-hmm. when it's married, it's a different ball game. You have to now manage the issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a different thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, okay, there's this uh, issue that people used to have when it comes to ideology. Okay. Like we Africans, we believe that men don't apologize. Okay. Uh, we meet people. We are the man of the hour, so we don't apologize. Mm-hmm. And you find yourself in a relationship with a guy that doesn't, he doesn't apologize. He doesn't see anything wrong with this thing. You're mm-hmm. trying to communicate, and he's like, come oh, on. We don't have me, me tell you sorry. I can't be telling you sorry. Mm. How do you how do you cope? Do you and we advise the person end the relationship, or is there a time frame for you to check if it's really going to change, or how what are you going? How do you go about such mm. issues? Okay. Um, there's there's what we call the traditional man. Mm. The traditional man is the man that tells you I'm I'm from the east. In the east, we don't. we don't do like this. Okay. They are come from women, don't. My fathers, my fathers did not do like this. Mm-hmm. My mothers, my forefathers, you know, that kind of traditional mindset. Mm-hmm. They live their life from the dictates of culture and tradition. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not against culture and tradition, mm-hmm. but as a believer, as a Christian, mm-hmm. your, your first um, constitution is the word of God. So we have culture contradicts that you should willing to let go and let the word of God lead and prevail. So for me, I advise you this. Anytime you meet a traditional man, wrong, wrong. When you meet a man who is a traditional man to the core, mm-hmm. who will tell you in my place and all that, and you can see this man hey, in our house, that this tradition that we that go through and all that, I tell you they're wrong. Because those kind of men, they are not bright doing, they are bright doing. Mm. They doom the woman, they don't groom her. Okay. So you are put in a in a box, in a tight fist whereby your life your life is lived by men don't apologize, mm. men don't cry, men don't men don't and all these things are not scriptural. Just Even Jesus Christ wept now. Mm. Jesus Christ wept. So the concept of a man saying, I cannot apologize, it's 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 wrong. It's not scriptural, it's not even moral. Because a man can make mistakes. And as long as you can make mistakes, you should be able to apologize. It's ego. It's pride that is coming in. And we said earlier that you should need to sacrifice your ego and your pride. Say, I'm sorry, does not mean you are weak. It doesn't mean you are strong. So when you find out you are with a man who does not apologize, doesn't say sorry, when he offends you, he just wants to cover the whole thing and find the and then also if that is your issue and you know you can cope you can live with that aspect find a good but if there are other no no there are other signs and symptoms that that is just one of the the many that are advice you want but if that is the only issue it doesn't happen that's every other it doesn't teach you it, but it doesn't just like happen that's, and you know you can live with it mm. I, I don't mind it doesn't happen that's how you know the past kind of man mm. and, and you don't mind well, fine and good, but if you know that that apology means the world to me, that's I'm sorry. I want to see that my partner is, is shows remorse, shows a commitment to the father. They all know when they hurt me, they all know my feelings. So when I'm hurt, they are willing to say I'm sorry. They acknowledge when they've done something wrong, which is right. Because most often than not, when a person is not willing to apologize, it means that somewhere down the line, there is pride. And pride doesn't come with just one side. It comes with a myriad of different other um, characters. So when the person has pride, they don't apologize. And for a person to apologize, it means he feels he, 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 he should not be held accountable. That's what it means. So there are a lot of things. He doesn't want to be held accountable because say I'm sorry means I know that I'm wrong. And I'm applying to you because I'm accountable to you. So it means the person does not want to be held accountable. The person feels he should not be corrected. Feel that he is always right. So even when he's wrong, he's right. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that come up and you will actually see all of them. So I advise in that case, when finally the man has pride, 
but it has an ego, it's not going to apologize, but it has other issues. Uh, uh, give him time, pray about it. Like I said earlier, you are believing, is there a conviction? If there's a leading, there's a conviction, most often than not, God is working on you. God is still working on you, and those aspects will break. No leading, no conviction, and you know that this man is not changing. Because changing, yeah. or the lady is not changing. Changing, find the, look for the exit door, mm-hmm. and, and exit the building. Um, okay, I used to have this issue with someone when it comes to communication. I mm-hmm. believe uh, communication is the highest level of intimacy. Okay. So if you have this partner that doesn't like to communicate, it tells you that I'm not the type of person that keep in touch. Mm-hmm. Like, someone can stay like a week without hearing from you, mm-hmm. and the person claims to be in a relationship with you. Is, do you see anything wrong? Is there, do you think there is no... Can you have a love without communication? Do I see anything wrong with that? Yes. Yes. I see everything wrong with that. Okay. That you are in a... Remember I said earlier that I love you is commitment. Mm-hmm. And commitment involves communication. Mm-hmm. I, I know I have an obligation. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to be committed to my obligation. Mm-hmm. This is my duty. And I'm willing to... Um, and um, do it. Communication is there. Mm-hmm. So when a person tells you they love you and they are not willing to communicate, mm-hmm. it, it, it is not often a, a direct um, show of love. Like I said, when a person loves you, there will be passion. Mm-hmm. So so what, yes, and passion is pursuit. So if, and in pursuit, you will find communication. Mm-hmm. You will find physical presence and all that. So a person who who has passion, sometimes it really loves someone. Sometimes you can just be reading and their thoughts come to mind. Even someone who's not your partner, a friend, let me just call this person. How are you doing? I've not heard from you in a while. Just let me, I just thought of you now. Mm-hmm. You, get me? you want to stay in touch with your friends, mm-hmm. not to mention someone that you love and you want to spend the rest of your life with. So I, I, when it comes to relationship and love, communication is a key part. And even even the event, I of building marriage, you need communication because if you don't communicate, you will not get to know the person. The person will not know you, and they are there. and when there is there is ignorance, mm-hmm. there will always be assumptions. Mm-hmm. There will be misunderstanding. Mm-hmm. There will be no trust. Other issues will come in. So when we communicate, we don't just communicate because we want to communicate. Mm-hmm. We communicate because there are things that communication brings into the home. Mm-hmm. With communication, you build intimacy. Mm-hmm. With communication, you build trust. Mm-hmm. With communication, you build friendship. Mm-hmm. So when a person says they love you and they are not willing to communicate, mm. it means this person was is not ready to love. Mm. Like you ask that person, when is it time to love? You I said when you are ready. Mm. So a person who is not yet ready to communicate mm. should not be willing to love. You don't want to call, you don't want to text. I'm not the kind of person. Jesus Christ, I don't think that I was kind of person wanted to die. I don't think it was a dying type because it is it's even proved in the Bible. Mm. He didn't want to die. But he had to. He prayed and said, if it's possible. I, I don't, I'm not the dying type. Mm. I don't like to die. I don't like sacrifice. I don't like sacrifice, but let your will be done. Mm. And that was a proof of his love for the Father as well. Mm. Willing to let go of his own life and all that for the Father. So a person who is not willing to let go of their own personal comfort or lifestyle, or how they be. So when you get married to that other person, they are going to bring in their, they, they, they want to live with you in marriage as single. Mm. I don't call, I don't taste. But now you are married, things should change. Mm. Are you me? So now you are married and you still want to eat outside, spend Friday with the boys. You want to still live uh, as a lady. Now you are married, you still want to be visiting auntie, uh, uncles, every spend uh, Friday with the girls. You don't cook, you're not at home. So you're just living life, viva la loca. Uh, you're just living and partying and flexing. And you are married. You still want to live that single baby girl life. Now you're married. I'm not saying that as a marriage is a prison or that you cannot have fun when you're married. But I'm saying that when you are married and you still want to live as a single, it means you are not really ready to commit. To commit. So when that happens, uh, you should be willing to communicate and say, look, this is something that will not happen. I cannot take it when you don't call me. In fact, it shows the person does not love you. The person loves you, they want to hear from you. I will say that in the cool of the day, God was in, in the garden looking for Adam to communicate. Mm. The Holy Spirit always wants intimacy, fellowship, because He loves us. So, love will always show by fellowship and communication. So, when you don't find communication, I, I tell you, there is no love. Because love is not just mouth, 
I love you, and I can't show proof. It means there is no love. There is no love. I love her. Oh, no, I got don't love her. Don't worry. We, what you have is, is butterfly flying in your stomach. You know, emotions, chemical attraction. But beyond that chemical attraction, you're not willing to be work. You don't love. Wow, thank you very much. Um, it's Valentine. Valentine is on the 14th, and I've yes. seen a lot of package for. Most of the package I'm seeing is mostly for ladies. Yes. Come and get your Valentine package. Come and get this. Come and get this. When it comes to love, love has to do with giving and sacrifice. Yes. And what is happening currently in Nigeria? You see that men tend to give more than mm-hmm. than uh, us somehow. How do you balance this thing when you have a partner, for example, a lady that is not willing to give? Your birthday, the person will send you a long text message. A king was born, blah blah blah. When it's our own birthday, you will buy a gift and all that stuff. And maybe your love language is men. I know somehow you guys like gifts, but you guys like it on the low level. I'm like, oh, how do you balance this when you have a partner that is not, that's not ready to give? She ends up getting and getting and getting and getting. How okay. are you try to, you don't know how to communicate this, so it's not look somehow. How do you go about something like this? Yeah. Um, when it comes to sacrifice and giving, um, even when you talk about relationship, you always advise and tell that it should be mutual. It should be mutual. There should be a giving and receiving. There should be reciprocation. It's the same thing even for us as believers. Um, God loves you. He wants love in return. God gave his son wants your life in return so when it comes to you know a lot, a lot of times persons um you know we are born in different environments mm. that affects us mm. we are exposed to different kind of settings mm. for instance if you have a young lady or a young man who grew up in a setting where there was never enough mm. things were always scarce the food was not enough everybody is used to trying to grab everybody is used to Holding, hiding, okay. because they were, they were never used to surplus. Yeah. That will mold the kind of person that lady or guy will be when they are grown. Okay. Are you getting me? So we have people who we are not taught how to give. Mm-hmm. You know, you have, have you seen children before? Who are holding a sweet? Give me the sweet. Yeah. Like, yeah. And there's some children are quick to give. You know, even giving is learnt. As people go, they are taught how to give. Why some persons who are because of the government they live in, they are exposed to poverty and want. They learn to take more than give. Mm-hmm. They are always used to people giving to them. Are you getting me? Mm-hmm. So those people when they are in a relationship, they are used to. And then you know this concept of women and men. The man is man is the head, is the provider. Mm-hmm. Some ladies it sinks into their head so much so that they feel. The money should not be one given. At times, it's not because they are being intentionally stingy, mm. but it's a wiring. Mm. It's a way they have come to see life. Yeah. Like as a lady, you don't, don't, don't money give, to yeah, you don't give, you don't give. If you give as a lady, you are just selling yourself short. You know, wrong teachings. Are you getting me wrong teachings? Are also being taught. Mm. Some women will tell their daughters, so as you get into marriage, see, see this man. Your money is your, your money. Is your money. Mm. Don't go and woo yourself. See your father. That was how your, 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 the mother brings her own experience mm. and uses it to affect the daughter. The daughter begins to replicate or do something in that line. So, mm. at times, we have people who are, it's not their fault, mm. their environment, upbringing, their experience of people and themselves makes them to end up not knowing how to give. Mm. So, and in life, we, uh, we should be open to learn. As we grow, we learn, we learn, we unlearn. So, you didn't know how to give. You know, as a teenager, as an adult, and then you come to your ship, you should be willing to learn. So you can teach your partner how to give. Mm-hmm. Have a partner who doesn't know how to give. You show them how to give by giving. Mm-hmm. Show them how to give by communication. Mm-hmm. You should. I last week I got you. You should be able to get me. You should, I'm not bothered about feel. Are you getting me? So you communicate. Let them know. And then as well, when you are ready with somebody heading to marriage, mm-hmm. one of the the signs that you will last together mm-hmm. is that you guys can rock the boat and you see things over right, you can address issues but there is you people feel that if i talk now mm-hmm. uh, let me just leave it if i talk now it, it, there will be problem and our wedding is in three months time if i talk now I mean, mm-hmm. you are you are you are postponing the inevitable but when you address the issue head down say look 
Let's talk. I don't really feel credible. And then you can resolve conflict without it having to lead to resentment, malice, and all that. And issues can be resolved. And that shows that is a good sign that you will last together as a couple. But when you bring up issues and the issue you brought up, you just brought up a small issue. And notice this, and then the person will carry face for you for two months. In your call, doesn't tell because you raise that issue. It's a sign that when you get married, there will be, there will be serious issues. So you can teach the person how to give. I said by communication, let the person know. And I, I, I don't know how, how you can also ask, tell me about your family. You can bring, bring insights from that. Tell me about your upbringing. And then tell you, well, in my family, this, this, this. you can begin to see why they are behaving the way they behave. Mm-hmm. So, people know how to give because when they were growing up, there was always surplus. Mm-hmm. They always had more than enough to give. And their parents taught them to give. Told them that when you give, you receive. So, they learned it. So, people know how to give. So, you can ask questions but by their family or bringing, communicate to them. And then show them by example. Mm-hmm. Give to them. Give to them. Give to them. Now, why I say communication? Because people, even when you are giving, they are blind. Yeah, you're not seeing it. You're giving, and it, it doesn't register really to them that he has been the one giving. Yeah, so, you like, add, is it yeah. just this yeah. so you add communication. Okay. So don't, just, don't just expect them to know mm-hmm. that by giving to, by example, just by your example, mm-hmm. without selling they feel guilty. It's, it's true. Last time you got me something, and now to okay, next time I think you, you can learn. So, but you know, let me say, tell them face to face, head on. So, add communication, mm-hmm. prayers as well. Mm-hmm. To learn. So, one of the key signs of a person who is ready for marriage mm. is teachability, mm. being able to be taught, mm. willingness to learn. Mm. So you see a person who does not want to learn, doesn't want to learn, you are trying to bring up an issue, the person who doesn't want to learn, is a red flag. It's a big red flag. Mm. So you can communicate. Show by example, even by prayers, and hopefully they'll adjust. If if they are not being intentionally stingy, mm. they will adjust. But those ones that that they want to be stingy. It's their choice to be stingy. They, they, as you are speaking, they feel you just want to eat from them. It's a red flag. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so can you share your personal experience where sacrifice has strengthened the relationship? And how do you determine that your personal uh, experience where you think that sacrifice has strengthened so, a relationship? Could be mm-hmm. love or marriage relationship? Okay. Um, um, this life for me, for example, I on a daily basis I have to sacrifice. Okay. So my man mm-hmm. sacrifice, you know, when you have a wife and a kid, mm-hmm. and you know, you come home even though you are tired, mm-hmm. you find a way to help in the house, assist your wife, mm-hmm. you know, do one or two things, maybe house chores. Mm-hmm. You know, that takes a level of sacrifice. Maybe you're tired, you want to just go and sleep. Imagine you come back from work and you're just coming to say, only mm-hmm. less food. You're not willing to say, how was it? Are you tired? No. So, so me, mm-hmm. sacrificing in social situations, I see how it makes my wife respect me more, um, honor me more, value me more, because I'm willing to sacrifice. So I see the result in my home, in my marriage, because I'm willing to sacrifice. And then when I, when I counsel a person and I see their willingness to sacrifice, or they tell me, I, I once counsel a lady, and she told me about the young man she was in with. Mm-hmm. The young man was, she, they were in coaching for two years. And over a one year span mm-hmm. of being in coaching, the young man had never sent her a dime, even 100 naira liters card. He had never sent her. So somehow, somehow, he was not willing to sacrifice money. Mm-hmm. Said, even money, you have to sacrifice. Even when you don't have enough, you bring out something. And how did that end? She broke up with him. I do that. Yes, mm-hmm. she she broke up with him. So I told her, look, this is not going to work. You have a young man and you are coaching for that long. You don't even need to ask <laughs> because she works, she earns money, she feels well, uh, she's okay. But if he really loved you, mm-hmm. if he really knew what he needs to love, mm-hmm. his substance will be involved. Mm-hmm. The proof of love is a sacrifice, uh, sacrifice that giving for God's love the word and give. So I've seen relationships whereby. A person refused to sacrifice, mm-hmm. and most often it always ended in breakup. In breakup, but whereby you had persons, for example, I counseled a, a, a couple, and the young man was willing to come to, for counseling. That was a man letting go of his ego. You know, most men don't want to come counseling. Mm-hmm. When, when, as a lady, you say, Look, I have to speak to somebody, the young man is telling you, Nobody will come and tell me how I run the relationship. The man will come and tell you, Who is the person? Self? Is he? No, 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 no. I'm not. I get him. Mm-hmm. So I've seen a couple heart issues. 
and because the, the man was willing to let go of his pride and ego, there was there was resolution. The issue was addressed. But Johnson, Apostle Josema was giving a, a story of a couple that he counseled. He said what it was the police, police that came to separate the couple. They were fighting in the house, fighting seriously. The neighbors had to call police. You know that kind of thing that they must have to call police and the police have to come in separate them. The police said this is a civil matter. You cannot really call me. Go on. And the the other wife was like, let's get see you first. And the man was willing to let go. And after counseling, the marriage, they are at peace today. Because somebody was willing to sacrifice the pride and ego. But when you a person is not willing to sacrifice and say, This is where I stand, I'm not moving at each. Often than all, you hurt your partner and you hurt yourself because you will ultimately lose that relationship. And then for, even for those who are married, you will not you marriage may persist, but peace may not be there. Trust may not be there. The love goes out the window. You are, you are married, but there are some things that you have lost because you choose not to let go of your ideologies, your perspectives. I sleep with the life on. I'm not going to change that for anybody. Uh, this is how I want life to be. Uh, this is how I want the house to look and all that. And in an attempt to not sacrifice, most often I've seen it cost people their relationship. Happy ones, even though that, just because somebody chooses not to sacrifice. Mm, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, you know something about uh, background and other uh, people, uh, why do you know people have dysfunction? Some ladies, maybe they didn't really have this father figure. Okay. Some guys, maybe they didn't have a uh, mother taking care of them. And once they see a lady that the lady is giving them this uh, motherly vibe, yeah. they tend to fall in love helplessly. Ah, guy, I'm in love. Or if the girl just see someone that's giving them this fatherly care, it'll be mm. like providing for them. Ah, the girl is. Is already in love. Mm. How do you this time that love? We have so many relationships. This time, how do you differentiate between love and something like let's say they are trying to lose up the situation yes. or other okay. feelings? Um, in all this, knowledge is key. Okay. Um, because um, um, Pastor Kisle Kuko always says something. Mm. He said, "Be sure that your normal mm. is normal." Mm-hmm. Be sure that you're normal. Mm-hmm. For example, have you seen people who, when they are talking, they shout? They're shouting. Ah, and you say, Why are you shouting? Say, I'm not shouting. You're not normal voice. Say, you're shouting. Say, I'm not shouting. Look, I'm not shouting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why right. I like right. talk. Maybe right. because they were born from a home where everybody shouts. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to shout. Before your head, you shout. Mm-hmm. Why some homes? You whisper. If you shout, they take you to the doctor. <laughs> to check what was wrong with you. So everybody in this person, they are used to talking calmly and gently. So when you see a marriage whereby or you know, by the young one is coming from a shouty background and the lady is coming from a very quiet background. And the young one is shouting and are you angry with me? What have I done? Say I'm not angry with you. I just say, say no, you are angry with me. What is the issue? Are you getting me? Yeah. So most of them background upbringing affects persons a lot. <laughs> but the issue is this, you was get to a point that you try to diagnose it's my normal normal. What I think is normal. Is it really normal? How I think I do things and I think that is what it should be. Is it really the way it should be? A lot of people, when they, they are always frowning. They are always frowning. And in their mind, they are smiling. That's their normal. That's their normal. So when they, when they are coming around and say, when the pastor calls the girl or the girl, you are, you are frowning. Why? Because they, they are not frowning. They say, are you angry? Say, I'm not angry. I'm happy. But the face. So, so yes, there are things we actually need to learn. To, to change what we think is normal. So uh, an adult should, this is why we, we have um, seminars, mm-hmm. conferences, beyond just leadership, mm-hmm. on money, mm-hmm. on family, on parenting, which I see you guys do here, which is wonderful. You know, trying to address a lot of issues. Uh, mm-hmm. And on um, your David Media Show, which I, I commend. You know, you try to address issues on faith, on morality, on parenting, because of this is even so this style of parenting. Mm-hmm. Because when you were being brought up, the mother will use razor mm-hmm. to tear the child's skin, cook pepper. That's discipline. You know, the child cannot speak to the mother on any issue. As you come and say there was one boy, say, good boy. They have not heard you from that boy. There was one boy in my class, two slap at one day. Mm. Three slap. Four. They have not heard you because they don't want to see you. Are you getting me? So all that um, so persons have to come to a point whereby they expose themselves to knowledge mm-hmm. so that you can learn, or learn and relearn and know if what you are doing is normal. 
and you get money. So it is very, very important. So when you see people who are, when you have issues, maybe you come from a place whereby you, um, you have a mother figure, they have a father figure, as you begin to grow and expose yourself to knowledge, what knowledge does is to help you diagnose, help you, um, it's part of what we call emotional maturity. You know yourself. Most of the involves you knowing yourself, knowing your, this what we call the SWOT analysis, your strengths, your weakness, your opportunities, and your threats. S W O T SWOT. So I should know my strengths. I should know my, if I don't know my strengths, it means I don't know myself. If I actually know your strengths, you should only tell me what, how, where you are good. This is my strengths. You should know your weaknesses. You should know the opportunities you have and the threats. They are around you as a person or whatever. But a person can have a threat of he, he likes TV, he likes the mission, so that can distract him. Can come around and so for someone, someone who knows that if I enter a place to read and the TV is on and read, you should know that you don't want to the TV in your house. That's a threat. Are you getting it? Mm-hmm. That, knowing yourself and the environment where you can stay and thrive well. So as you begin to go, expose yourself to knowledge. Knowledge helps you to, to know yourself. In that you begin to understand is a book. Why you act the way you act, you know, why you act the way you do. So what books like that reading helps you to understand why you are doing what you are doing. Helps you to know what is normal and what is normal. So you are able to better understand that the reason why I see ladies who are modeling and is because I have this kind of um, experience or my background. And then you begin to work on yourself intentionally because it, it is very wrong for you to love based on a dysfunction or based on a, a lack that you had and then suddenly you are loving not for the right motive or the right reason so uh, for me that will help the person getting knowledge that is the first point because the person will not even know if he doesn't know so the person will not know like we say there are those who, who know and they know that they know there are those that know and they don't know that they know there are those that don't know and don't know that they don't know and there are those that don't know and they know they don't know so it starts when you know that look there is an issue i have this issue and then it helps you to better address and come out of it so you know that you have this weakness for example a young one should be able to know that i have seen myself that i have this weakness towards ladies that are chubby so when i see ladies chubby ass body love starts going that's not love that's lost Okay. That's lost. So they, they you know they you should know when they're lost. They're lost. So a young man sees a lady, let me say she's busty, chubby and all that, and he starts feeling I'm in love. Oh, I saw this girl today. Oh God, I've seen my wife. Mm-hmm. He's waist. He's not love. He's body. Are you getting me? And, and yeah, that's what happens. So and therefore you lady too. You see a guy maybe, maybe going up, he didn't have money, you are broke, and then suddenly a guy just comes give you 10k, 5k, and you fall in love. That's not love. It's the money that is pulling you there. So when you know yourself, it helps you better. So for someone in that case, what I would advise is that they go for knowledge, go for books. In fact, everybody, everybody should stop reading. Everybody should attend seminars, conferences, thank God for prison like this, and then all is everywhere. When a person does not go for them, the Bible says, in all that gets you get understanding. Knowledge is a principal thing. I'm sorry. So that's what I'm saying. It helps you to diagnose. Otherwise, if, if it's only knowledge that reveals yourself to you, in the absence of knowledge, you will not know. So a person who comes to you and says, I have this issue, mm. already knows. Mm. And he knew because he was exposed to him. Then he can be helped. So it starts with everybody exposing themselves to knowledge. Then you're, you're able to diagnose your issue and then get proper counseling and guidance. So if a person has come to the point that they now know they have a dysfunction or they are falling in love with some kind of person because that's a good one. Now they know it's easier for them. Go for counseling. Get a mentor, go for mentorship and counseling. It's easy solved. It's easy solved. Okay. okay, so if uh, I've observed that if you send a text message to a guy and say we need to talk, immediately the guy is tense or what did I do? What? Yeah. If the guy is, is uh, scared of the relationship, how a scared of communication rather how how am i supposed to communicate and what should i be Approach the issue yes, the subject and, of communication yes and what should i be communicating in a relationship it's not all about going out to get your mama at night there are some vital things that we should talk about so what are those things and how do i tackle that issue of the guy trying away from communication okay um, when it comes to communication, or let me start from the first question you're talking about. When you notice that the person you're courting seems to, when you say let's talk, mm. is already tense, mm. anxious, and then 
trying to avoid say I'm, I'm busy, I'm busy, and then and they find each of those times you see let's talk. There was no talk. Somehow, someone they dodged you and avoided you. I think you can come up with more creative ways mm. to get them to talk. Mm. So you can say, let's go out and have just, just, just let's go out and just have fun. Let's just go out and sit down and just take some like, maybe a few drinks. Mm. So you sit down and then say, hey, there's this issue. Now the person is there. Mm. Or you just bring it up and say, what do you think about this? You, you, at times you can start by approaching an issue from another direction. So you know you want to talk about money. Mm -hmm. So you can start from painting a scenario. I had this friend, this this happened. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And then the person talks, tells you their mind, their idea. And then, that reminds me, how I want to do our own. Wow. It's on the table now. Yeah. So you can get creative. You can address the issue in that. You can start by putting a, a picture. You just start from, from a, a random topic. And then gradually, gradually, when they are getting last, the last, you are push the issue. Always want to be that happens when you see that when you say let's talk, the person is to try to avoid you. Um, I'm not around, I'm busy, and then before you know the avoid you thing, and that thing has left your mind, and then all that. So you can use the indirect approach in some cases to get across or get to the point you really want you guys to talk about. And then um what do couples in do? Um there are a lot of things to do. There um, there's communication as the first thing you do in coaching communication. Um the, the, you are communicating about get to know yourselves, talking about your likes, your dislikes, talking about your family, your background, your future aspirations and everything, talking about your, your um, then you communicate about your expectations. You know, every person coming to marriage or relationship has their expectation mm -hmm. of how they want it to be like what they feel it should be mm -hmm. based on like you were saying earlier based on where they are coming from you know in a family where the women they the one iron clothes mm -hmm. there's some clothes you go to is the wife that iron demands clothes mm -hmm. some families you go to is the husband that irons in different dynamics some places you go to the wife is the one that washes the man's car some place you go to is the reverse so a person who grew up in such a setting is already expecting this because that's all they were exposed to. So they feel this is how marriage should be. I am the one who should do this and not you. I've seen a, a lady who once told me, said, when I get married, my husband will never wash my own dish. Never. That to her is a disrespect for the man. Whereas in some places, the when the, the woman feels that's the height of love for the man to wash the own he feels he is love, the man is romantic, are you getting me? So other people have different expectations. So it is in communication that you are able to let out your expectations. This is what I expect. And then you can now harmonize and then address the issues and say no, no, and then you can compromise and then find a middle point. But there is no communication on your expectations. How many kids do you want? Three, me, I want seven. Okay, let's come down, let's negotiate. Okay, uh, won't you take four last? Say no, give me five. Stand the bushy and then there is the band that's okay. Okay, what's your last? What's your last? Okay, four and a half. Four. <laughs> so, what, what you get my point? So, something I like, I go to negotiate. So, what I'm saying is, there's no condition there will be issues. I once spoke to a lady, then she told me that she was married and she didn't want to have children in the because of her career. And so, I know like, they never discussed that during country. So, the man is thinking very soon after the pregnant. Mm -hmm. And the woman is busy taking pills mm -hmm. not to get pregnant. And the man is not aware. Mm -hmm. Now you already know that there's problem brewing because the day the man finds out, he will not be so happy about that. So can you tell this is what I expect? I mean children, when do we start having children? What is the method of family planning? Are we going to use this method or that method? All that should be discussed. Um, family, um, how we're going to structure our family. So you basically you discuss it, money issues. I'm going to have joint accounts, account, I'm going to have saving accounts. I'm going to manage our money. I'm going to manage our home. Um, church, I'm going to settle churches. I will do anything. So that's what you discuss, you communicate. You, a lot of couples, you don't they don't communicate. Mm -hmm. You just sit, down. just sit out, eat, drink, have fun, go out, go out, beat, all manner of things that they do, but they are not doing the real issue. And then when they finally get married, you start having challenges because they did not discuss their expectations. Mm -hmm. So they, you don't assume. Mm -hmm. Don't assume. Don't feel what is on your mind is what is on his mind. Uh, a, a, a woman should know she's the one that cooks. A woman should know she's the one that sweeps. A man should know he helps the wife. Don't assume. 
speak it out so that you know if what you are thinking is what they too are thinking so communication is important during courtship another thing that's important is um, building friendship doing things together you know, going out seeing your family spending time together um time together in um godly settings and put that uh, very important um going out you know uh, when you go out you see how the person relates with people when you go out, you see how the person handles real life issues. So you go to a restaurant, for example, and you see the man. Suddenly, the food takes time to come. He's already getting angry. And the water comes, he gets the cup of water and pours it on the water. You already know that this man has anger issues. Has anger issues. And you're like, one day you pour your water in the house. So um, going out tend to expose your partner to you and then vice versa. So because they did not do courtship rights, mm-hmm. the man is stranger. They might someone they did not know. So by the time they get married, they start seeing all manner of surprises. The man has anger issues. The woman has, um, why are you telling me? And then he's wondering, why didn't I see all these things? Because you did not cut, you didn't go out. You didn't go out. You were not spending time together. And that's why I also frown at certain kind of settings whereby a couple is cutting, and any time they are going to go out, they are pulled out and go out together to stand as a surprise. <laughs> so as a, the young man and the young lady are in the, this thing. One pastor is here, one mom is here, one daddy is here. Everybody will be on their best behavior. Everybody will be mechanical. But when they are alone, alone, I'm not saying in the bedroom. Yeah, but when they are alone and they are, you see, you can see someone say, it's like, it's like you're not normal. It's like you have a problem. Are you getting me? You cannot speak out freely and then you can actually get to know the partner for who they are. So I say, communicate, go out. Even you build friendship because it's a friendship that will help you stay in mind. So you start by building that friendship. A lot of couples, after getting married, they find out they're not friends. They are married, but they're not friends. The man confides in the lady outside. The lady confides in the young man outside because they didn't build friendship. Friendship does not follow people. Have you seen a stranger before? You just meet someone on the way. And then, ah, how are you doing? And then, in fact, you don't just become a married friend overnight. You don't, even if you find another girl is your uncle, I say, ah, meet your uncle. Meet your niece, meet your nephew. You still don't just become automatic friends, even though you know you are meeting and she'll be friends. You start by saying, How are you doing? And then, if you're doing it, you do gradually, and gradually. So, you build friendship, you build courtship. If you sustain your marriage, you build intimacy that is getting to know each other. You you can save you a man. You have seen couples that get married, and then when they get home, Oh, and they sit down and after five minutes, you think about the man is on his phone. I'm not a man, and suddenly the person that we say I can't wait to get married, you are with the person that can't seem to talk on issues. After five minutes, you can see the person, then what we discuss now. What do we say now? And the guy will just go and look at his phone and because he really build friendship. So the relationship, communicate, build friendship. Build intimacy, get to know each other. Are you giving me the prayer as well? The relationship, the couple should pray because life is spiritual. A lot of things happen. I, I heard a story of a lady, the young man, they, they, they were traveling, their wedding was that weekend. They both of them died. So, life, the devil is not happy that you are happy. So, you are about to get married, you have posted your wedding picture on uh, Facebook. It's not about that, so that is happy with you. So you, there is need for prayers. Even when you come, a lot of issues happen in marriage. Now make marriage pray for fruitfulness. Fruit, you know, there will be no delay in childbirth. Pray against um cancer. Pray against ovarian. No, you pray against a lot of issues. So that's that you come with me. When you are know, cutting, you spend time to say, Lord, we commit this marriage to into your hands. When we get married, we are praying against this again. We will not lose a child. We are going to use prayer that you are sowing the seed for tomorrow. You are investing in your future. Prayer has the capacity to go to your future and clear away any obstacle that you does not see, that does not want to be in your future. So you spend time as well praying, not just playing, but you should also spend time playing because it is in playing that you build friendship. It's a plane that you, you laugh together, you smile together, and then you can actually laugh together and have that form. The marriage can be fun, not just function. Mm. Yeah, so that is important mm. as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, hey, this last question. Okay. Okay. Speaking of communication, it's uh, people, let's say, it's not even people, people, everybody assume that ladies don't know how to sustain 
uh, conversation. Like they saying hello, saying hi. Okay. That 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 right thing. So how do we tackle this issue of ladies not being able to sustain conversation? Okay. Um, I want to have talked on that before. I want to address that issue in some similar of how to speaking. Um, first of all, I I think I will. There are some ladies, not all ladies, mm-hmm. the ladies who are good at communication. But you should know that most often, the most some guys do not know from the next time. That lady that is telling you that is not cooking with you, is cooking with somebody else. So at times, when the person is not willing to communicate, it may be a sign that there is no interest. Mm-hmm. So you are saying, how, you, how was your day? Fine. Have you eaten? Fine. You, know, you can see that this is just monosyllabic responses. Often than not, it's a show that there is no interest. When a lady actually has interest in a guy, mm-hmm. when you ask her one question, she answers five. And ask you back. And ask you back. See, how was your day? Oh, my day was fine. By the way, my name is Sarah. I live down the street. My friends come to see. You can come to see. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just one question you get and because she has interest. Mm-hmm. But when the, when the lady does not have interest, you ask one question. She mm-hmm. will not answer the question that you asked her. You, uh, how are you doing? How can I help you? She has not seen answer the question, how can I help you? You talk, talk, she has not seen answer the question. So most times, then she will go to know when there is disinterest, when the person is not interested. Because even be, 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 beyond just chatting and you see all that happens in real life face to face talking. How you know what you do? I'm fine. I'm fine yeah, as she's yes, 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 I'm, I'm fine as she's this one, yes, I'm fine as she's not even interested. So um, you respect yourself able to know when there's no interest and you withdraw. Mm-hmm. Except where you are late, then you persist mm-hmm. and all that. Then for some reason as well, even when they have interest, they have this issue with um, communication. So for some reason it's because they are not too literate. They don't know how to chat very much, they don't very using voice notes and we have issues of challenges of um, not knowing how to chat or not have the time or you know, for some reason. That is not the issue for them. It's just that they don't. They are, they have not known how to be interested. They have not known how to how to communicate. How to be this person that can keep a person glued to them because of their social skills. So people are introverts. They are not good. They are not very social. So they don't when really you, they see you want to get close to them. They already the walls they are built around them begins to manifest. They already have anxiety. They already want what do I see? If I if I say this now on all that. So you can have so I said first of all, find out be sure that what you're having for the guy now is not disinterest. Be sure of that. Be sure as well this person is not maybe having issues with um, communication or speaking. Maybe barrier in language and all that is not issue. And then um it may be that the person has um doesn't know how to be an introvert doesn't have to communicate and all that so in such a case you can teach the person but when i eat them i don't know really um so that is as well are better on phone calls okay. than, than chatting so you can so you can call them and one hour on phone talking but when it comes to chatting they feel this lazy energy to type and all that but once you're on call Verbally and orally engaging them, they are maybe in the flow. So you can find out what is the list of communication and the person is better at. That may save the day. The person press phone call, that can be fine, or voice notes, that can be fine. So, and, and all that. See, those, those issues can help you to address uh, and then probably better manage that issue that just uh, model it off. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much, Francis Gift. I really learned a lot. Uh, love has different components. It has the spirit, which is called, it has commitment, it has conviction, it has the fruit of love, which is love, patience, and all that. It was really a great time. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to our channel, you can click on the subscription button and you can do where to follow our guest speaker on Facebook. Pharmacist Gift Musa. Thank you so much for watching. We love you. Bye. Yes.